Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your patience uh, with our short delay for this evening's hearing. I'm Kathy Pagani. I'm the chair of the Tuscaloosa Historic Preservation Commission, and I would like to welcome you to this month's hearing. Today's date is April 12th, 2023, and the time is 5.07 p.m. Um, I would like to have my fellow commission members introduce themselves to you, beginning on my right, please, Mr. McCool. Hello, I'm Matt McCool. William Edwards. Jordan Morris. David Nelson. Thank you. And joining us from city staff this evening, we have Mr. Chad Hobbs, who is the associate city attorney, Mr. Hudson Cheshire, who is the assistant city attorney, Ms. Emily Hayes, the neighborhood resources coordinator, Mr. Jonathan Bowen, planner, and we have Ms. Angie Terrell, the administrative assistant, and assisting with audiovisual support this evening is Mr. Kevin Jones. I'd like to go over the purpose of the Tuscaloosa Historic Preservation Commission and then go over the, the procedures for this evening's hearing. The general purpose of the Historic Preservation Commission is that we serve to protect and preserve the buildings, sites, and historic structures of significance in Tuscaloosa's historic neighborhoods. We are governed by Chapter 20, Article 2 of the Code of Tuscaloosa, which which includes design guidelines that are posted on the city's website, and you can, you can view these. Our decisions are based on these design guidelines and do not consider use or occupancy. We do consider such factors as architectural style, appropriateness of materials, and how the structure relates to other structures in the immediate neighborhood in determining the appropriateness of the application. An approval of an application requires five affirmative votes. If the certificate is approved, please be aware that there is a final inspection by city staff of these approved applications to ensure compliance with what was approved this evening. This is a public hearing. It is televised live on local cable, streamlined online through Facebook, and is being recorded to be posted on the city's website. We ask proper decorum, civility, and respect for others at all times. Prior to this meeting, notice was sent to adjacent property owners and the public has been notified of the applications to be presented tonight. This hearing is a chance for the applicant to present their case, for the public to make their views known about the project, and for commission members to gather relevant facts about the application before making its decision. City staff will begin by introducing the application. The applicant will have a chance to make any comments. The commissioners will then have the opportunity to ask the applicant questions about the case, and then I will open the hearing for public comment. At the close of public comment, the commission will then discuss the matter and vote on the application. Any person wishing to speak on behalf of another person, group, or entity shall provide written authorization to the chairperson from that person, group, or entity being represented. Immediate family members, and we define that as a spouse, a parent, or a child, do not have to provide such written authorization when speaking on behalf of another immediate family member. We ask the applicants to please leave the signs in the yards. Um, city staff will be around in a few days to pick them up. So now let's move on with our hearing this evening. The commission has been provided with a copy of the minutes for August, September, and October of 2022 prior to this hearing. Do I have a motion to waive the reading of these minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. And I'll, uh, let's vote on waiving the reading of the minutes. Beginning on my right, please. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Um, now, I will ask for a motion to approve said minutes. However, I do have some comments and corrections for those first. So we get the motion after that? All right. So, city staff, these are short, uh, and fellow commission members, I found just a few other little things. So, for the minutes for August 10th of 2022, on the first page, a little bit of redundancy in language, it's near the very bottom. We have an enclosed garage structure. Let's just take out the word structure, have an enclosed garage. On the third page, HPC 3522. We have the address of the uh, person representing the application as living on Imperial Road Court. That should be Imperial River 
Court, and the address is in Northport, so we need to note the city on that one. And finally, on the very last page, the other business on the historic expedited reviews, um, I noticed that in the September minutes, we have some really nice language there, and I would request that you re use that language here in August as well. It just, it just provides a little bit more context for those. Moving on to the September 14th, 2022 minutes. For HPC 3622, we do not have an address listed for Toby Dodson, where it says he spoke on behalf of the application. And then for 3722, um, partway through, we're talking about two parking pads in the rear yard, and then the next sentence says the parking pad. It should be parking pad, so just make that plural. Finally, October 12th, 2022 minutes, HPC 3822, the address listed is Black Bears Way. Black Bears is one word. It should be Black Bears, two words. And then finally, on this, HPC 3922, we do not have an address for Mr. Corder with the Builders Group who spoke on behalf of the application. And that's it. So. With those changes and what you've, commission members, what you've seen already, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of those previous hearings? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, so the motion is to approve the meeting minutes with the changes provided this evening. Let us vote, beginning on my left, please. Dr. Yes. Nelson. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. So now, let's see. Moving on. Um, the commission members have had a chance to review tonight's agenda items. Do any of the commission members have a conflict of interest as defined by Section 6 of the commission bylaws with any of the items this evening? I have one with um, HPC 1923. Thank you very much. I would like to ask staff if proper notification has been provided for each of the agenda items. It has. Thank you. All right, and we are moving on with our first application for this evening. Good afternoon, Commission. We're gonna move on to our continued cases from the previous HPC meeting. So the first case is HPC 823. Bobby Tesney petitions for a certificate of appropriateness for multiple additions and alterations to the primary structure at 2 Oakwood Court. This is in the Oakwood Court Historic District, Council District 4. So again, here's the location of the property as well as an aerial view. This is a view of the primary structure. Here we have the adjacent eastern, southern, and western properties. So the proposal has been changed. It is for an 18 by 26 and a half foot addition on the northeast corner of the primary structure. Uh, this addition will include those two new windows that match those on the primary structure. They are also proposing a 20 by 20 carport in the rear yard. Uh, this carport is a wood frame, party board siding and trim. So again, here we have the primary structure and just a couple of views of the primary structure. This is the updated site plan uh, to reflect those changes. So here's a clear image that shows a little bit more in detail. Uh, so the proposed addition, which is highlighted in that red uh, square, then you also have the proposed carport that's just north of that. So they have reduced the size of the carport. They've altered uh, the size of the proposed addition. As you will see on the, the coming elevations, they're also proposing to keep the exposed rafter tails uh, going down the side of that addition um, and then you will also note the gravel or not the gravel the grass pavers that will connect the driveway to that carport so again here we have the existing and proposed east elevation you can you can see the exposed rafter tails continuing um, on that new addition also those proposed transom windows this is a proposed and existing east elevation and in the proposed rear of the building. 
Uh, so here we have uh, the elevation for that accessory structure. The height is 16 feet, 8 inches. It's a 20 by 20, so they reduced it. Uh, the previous proposal was for a 20 by 25 foot. This is an image of a similar accessory structure and what it'll be used to model their accessory structure off of. So materials, hardy board siding, um, aluminum clad wood matching windows for the primary structure, fiberglass doors that match the existing grass pavers. Uh, the accessory structure will be composed of a wood post and a concrete pad underneath that. So here we have those spec sheets. This is the grass paver spec sheet. So essentially the grass is gonna go th grow through those pavers. This is an image from 13 Oakwood, so just right down the street where these grass pavers have been used in the past. And just a little more detail about those spec sheets. And we have the spec sheet for the windows and our applicable design guidelines for additions, uh, the carports, windows, and entrance and doorways. We did not receive any public comment for this application. We do have the petitioner here to speak in person. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Mr. Bowen? All right. Thank you. I'd like to invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to step up, please. And if you could state your name and your address for the record, please, sir. Sure. Uh, Chairman, members of the commission, I'm Al Cabinets with Cabinets Engineering, representing Bobby Tesney. Bobby is here as well tonight. Pat Roberts is also here. Pat will be actually building the structure, so any of the material questions of the buildings, Pat will be answering. Um, I was handling the, the site design and getting the dimensions and the percentages to work. Okay, just hang on one sec. We just um, is there? Um, I'm going to start with the site. Do we want to let Pat start with the building materials? I mean, either way you want. Oh, I, we'd love um, to hear what so you have to say. So basically, basically, we we've adjusted the size of the carport in the addition to to, to meet the criteria on the ground coverage ratios. Uh, the grass pavers. Um, we, we provided the specs. We got photographs of an existing installation in the district. That I don't think that site is sprinkled, so it's not well maintained. So I think ours is going to look better than that because Mr. Tesney is going to sprinkle his. But uh, try to keep the grass growing better. But it's a it's a very heavy duty product that can support a fire truck. So it's uh, it's uh, it's good for this application where we'll we'll be able to grow grass on it, uh, and yet you know, have a drivable surface to access the carport. Um, front yard of the side, if we can look at that, we're making alterations. To, well, we can see right here a little bit. Alteration to the driveway, making the pavers slightly wider. They're uh, a little too narrow for current cars. We're adding, I think, eight inches or a foot to those. Uh, if we can drop down to a view at the front, maybe, at the curb cut. So down there... Um, there's an overhead utility pole here. It makes this turning motion into the driveway a little tight, so we're widening the far side of the driveway to get a little better turning radius. Uh, solid concrete here to work the cars get straightened back out, and then you'll be back onto the treads with the grass uh, landscape strips in the middle. Just trying to improve that access there without wearing out the grass and beating down the center aisle. Um, there's a summary of the uh, impervious area there, and then there's also a preview sheet of the summary, which is the backyard by itself. This is the total size of the summary of just the backyard and the building. Um, so we now have adjusted everything to meet the, to meet the plan. Do we have any questions for Mr. Cabinus? Thank you very much. Thank we appreciate it. Let me open the floor to public comment. Did we receive any submitted comments? We did not receive Thank any you. submitted comments. I did want to uh, state that the petitioners have received expedited approval for the, the driveway expansion. Um, so it's also included on this site plan, but it's they have received approval for that. All right. Thank you. So is there anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to this application? All right, I'll close the floor to public comment and open the floor to discussion and a motion by commission members. So we saw this last month. Uh, we've had some 
substantial alterations here based on the comments of that previous hearing. My primary concerns before were related to the rafter tails on the on the structure and <clears throat> how that was going to look with that changing that detail uh, onto the addition. Um, that's been um, addressed in this and uh, being that the site coverage um, meets the requirement and utilizing this this product that allows the, the permeability of the, the rear yard to be intact, and I see no issue. I, I echo everything uh, Jordan said. My, my main concern um, with our, our last proposal were, uh, were the rafter tails, and uh, seeing as how uh, that's been revised, uh, I, I see no issue with this proposal. Motion to approve is presented. Thank you. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. So a motion to approve and, and a second. Any further discussion, folks? All right. So we will uh, vote on the motion to approve as presented. Let's begin on my left, please. Yes. 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 Mr. Cabinets, your application has been approved this evening. Should anything change, please talk to city staff before you move forward. Good luck with your project. <clears throat> Moving on to our second continued case. This is HPC 1323, Dakota Simpson petitions for a certificate of appropriateness to construct a gazebo at 1507 13th Street. This is in the 13th Street Historic District, Council District 4. So here we have the location of the property as well as an aerial view. This is a view of the primary structure. Here we have the adjacent northern and western property. <coughs> so the proposal remains the same as for a gazebo in the rear yard. Uh, the dimensions are 12 by 12 and it's 11 foot tall. So here again, we have the primary structure. This is the updated site plan as well as the specs of what the gazebo would look like. Um, so you can see the gazebo will be located five feet away from each property line. This is an image of what's currently out there. Um, like I mentioned at the previous meeting, whenever we went out, we put a stop work, they stopped. So it hasn't been moved. Uh, if approved, that would be moved to meet the setbacks. <coughs> Materials are for a wood gazebo, as well as 28 gauge or 29 gauge uh, metal roofing. Here's that building material uh, dimensioned out. And then here we have that roofing material. And this is the applicable design guidelines. Uh, we did not receive any public comment this time around, um, and we do have the petitioner here to speak in person. Thanks very much. Can we have the uh, proposed structure of the drawing there for us? There we go. Thanks. Any questions for Mr. Bowen? Thank you very much. I'd like to invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to come up, please. And please state your name and address for the record. Dakota Simpson, 1507 13th Street. Thank you. So, Mr. Simpson, thank you very much for providing additional information for us. Um, we just want to make sure that we're absolutely clear on what's happening here. Um, so we have a 12 by 12 platform, and it, you are, let's go to the view of the existing. So you are moving this, or are you cutting so it off? What I'm are you doing? Gonna, I'm going to disassemble it. Cut it back down and move it so I know for sure it meets the standards, what it needs to be. Perfect. We just want to make sure, yeah, that, the, that it's at least five feet. Yeah, it Perfect. Will be completely, yes, ma'am. Great. And then if we can go back to the drawings again. And so the platform is 12 by 12. The, the drawing you've provided makes it look like we've got more of the platform over on the left-hand side. Is, it, is the pavilion going to be centered on the platform? Yes, ma'am. So okay. The, the the roof will be, it, it'll measure out like 10 by 10. Mm -hmm. So then you'll have a band, and to do that, it's trying to keep, to get like when the rain falls on the dirt and the grass, it don't splatter, so at least it's hitting the deck instead of making a trench all the way around it. Perfect, perfect. And then the roof line, I just want to make sure I'm clear about that. It's coming in, there's, go, there's going to be a, a ridge line, but we've got four sides sloping in, right? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll only have two sides. Oh, okay. The, so you'll have open. flat, flat on one yeah, end. On the, on the front and back, okay. it will be open, two sides. Oh, I see. Okay. So one side of the yes. drawing is kind of, you can see 
the top of it has the the roofing material and then if you look at the other side of it it kind of shows the bottom where to have its strips and uh thank you that that wasn't clear to me thank you very much yes do we have any other questions or um clarifications mr johnson mr. simpson none thank you so much thank you. Let me open the floor to public comment. Is there anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to the application? I'll close the floor to public comment and open the floor to a motion discussion by commission members. So while the, the drawing is not exactly to scale, Mr. Simpson, you know, describe to us what we're seeing here. Everything's laid out. We've got the posts. We, we know all the di the dimensions are there, and he has confirmed that it will be five feet from the property line, which is what the requirement is. Is there any further any further questions that you have on this? I know the most concerning item was the the five foot setback and so that's clearly indicated in this site plan on the left that that is going to be alleviated um, and then as far as uh, what the materials are uh, between the, the drawing and the clarification by the petitioner tonight I have a good understanding of what is going to get constructed so I when this uh, was brought before us last time I think there was a bit of uh, confusion based on uh, drawings not not to scale about uh, what was being proposed uh, and <clears throat> I'm s still a little bit hazy on that but I think between what you've described here uh, and the drawing uh, I have an enough of an understanding to to uh, see what's proposed um, between that and the materials and the setback I also agree uh, with Jordan that um, this is uh, acceptable. Any further concerns, comments, or points of discussion? Do we have a motion to approve the application? I'd like to make a motion to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. <clears throat> so the motion is, is to approve the application as presented this evening, and we have a second. Any, no further discussion? Then we will vote. Beginning on my right, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. Mr. Simpson, your application has been approved based on the dimensions you gave on that, on the submitted materials, and the narrative you provided this evening with the f moving that five feet away from the <coughs> property line. Thank you very much. Should anything change, see city staff, and there will be a final inspection. Um, good luck with your project. Thank you. Moving in the cases to be heard for this agenda. So there is a slight change to the agenda uh, since this petition was in relation to one of the, the continued cases. So next we're going to hear HPC 2123, Bobby Tesney petitions for a certificate of appropriateness for the construction of a fence. This is at 2 Oakwood, the Oakwood Court Historic District, Council District 4. So here we have the location and the aerial of the property. Again, the primary structure, and then those adjacent eastern, southern, and western properties. So the proposal is to keep a recently installed wood slat fence in the side and rear yard. Uh, the petitioner, as you'll see in the pictures, the fence is up. Once we made contact that they needed further approval, they have left the fence. So essentially, this fence um, will be finished on both sides. As you can see on this image, it's currently not finished. So they are proposing to keep this fence and to finish the installation to make it look um, finished on both sides. So that's the wood slat fence. Here we have the site plan that just shows an outline of where the fence will be located. And the materials, it's a wood fence. And here are our applicable design guidelines. Uh, we did not receive any public comment for this application and we do have the petitioner here to speak in person. We didn't receive any submitted public comment, but we will have 
a chance for public comment. Um, I'm just letting the sure. uh, people who are here know that. So we will open the floor to public comment. All right. Um, any other any questions for Mr. Bowen? All right. Thank you very much. So let me invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to join us and um, state your name and address again for the record, please. Uh, Chairman, members of the commission, Al Cabinets of Cabinets Engineering, representing Bobby Chesney. Uh, and do, can you state the address too, please? Uh, my address? Uh, yeah. Uh, 2416 Clinton Drive, Tuscaloosa 35406. Thank you. Um, the, um, um, and Mr. Chesney just didn't understand. He was extending a fence, repairing a fence. One of the fences, he's kept the post, added new panels. One of the other fences, he's done some uh, replacing posts, but kept the old panels. So, uh, But anyway, he um, didn't understand. He had to get prior approval of staff to do this. But he, he has stopped construction. But this is a um, fence underway, and this is what he would like to finish. There was an existing fence there that just needed a repair. Yeah, so I've, I've looked at this application uh, when we, we received the packets, and then looking at it again now, you know, right now that one side is like a shadow box type fence, right? So you've got that on one side, and you're going to repeat that same thing on the other side, right? Yes. Okay. Do you mean the other side of the of these property posts line, of these posts? Yeah. Okay. So that we that on the other property they will not see the unfinished posts, and that's that's the um, that's in the design guidelines. And it looks like it matches the fence in the back. Is it is that the same type of design? I yeah. The uh, so the and you're going to see the. So the vertical posts are offset, so that uh, so that so they're staggered front to the back. So you you, you would see that cross member the way it's planned right now. Mm -hmm. so but both sides but through the slats, right? Is that what you you mean when you say that? Just just like um, it's shown in the in the photograph here. Yeah. So this, this so that side's complete. <coughs> The left side is complete. The right side is not. Yeah. So the 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 side we're not seeing in this view would look like this view when it was here. Right. So my understanding is they're just taking what's existing there and they're going to repeat that yep. on this side, so that we've got a finished side on on both sides of the fence. Right. 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 Any other questions? All right, thank you so much, Mr. Cabinets. So let me open the floor to public comment. Is there anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to the application? Thank you. Yes, name and address, please. I'm Hannah Brown. I live at One Oakwood Court, which is immediately to the west of this one. And there was a fence already at this house which extended to the back of the existing carport, which has now been demolished. So the uh, owner, I'm assuming it's the owner, took that down and then put it back up again, but then extended a different kind of fence 24 feet down towards the street in such a way as to cut off a bit of my property so that the only way I could get to it is by climbing over an air conditioner or alternatively a chain link fence, both of which have been there for as long as I've been there, which is almost 10 years. Um, I think I'm a little bit old for doing that kind of thing. Um, I came slightly unprepared because I had a crisis at home, but I looked and I was going to look up the exact number on the um, guidelines. But on the fencing guidelines, one of the things mentioned is consideration for the appearance and of the property next door. 
an icing an extending offense the way that this one was extended it is not consistent with that. I don't have a problem with offense. I don't even really have a problem with it being back to front, even though it is. I don't have a problem with it being on the log line. But I do have a problem with how far down it extends because of the inconvenience to me and my property. But unfortunately, the staff didn't provide a picture of that. Although I told them quite clearly that I did object to it, and I think if they were doing their job, they would have, had, they would have given you photographs. Would staff mind um, just pulling up Google, the Google Street View? I've got for a second. on my phone, but it would be kind of hard for you all to look at it. Right, we'll, we'll just see. Um, you know, some of these issues are not part of the design guidelines, as you know. Um, so it'll, we'll, we'll take everything into consideration here. I'm just kind of, I'd like to just see a little bit more what you're talking about. If we can. I know it's, there we go. So you can't see it. And so we don't we almost see it. Okay, it's not the air conditioner that you see in that picture, it's a further one. There are two. It, yes, it's further back. I'm not even certain that they could service my air conditioner with it then. Yeah. Ms. Brown, where where is the issue with the fence? I'm just not clear, and I'm sorry. Uh, do you mind explaining that again? This is the other um, HVAC. The condenser unit is further back. So oh. you're looking at one of them. It's further back. Um, so north okay. of the one that you see in the picture. Is it behind those two windows we see where there's a projection? Where, huh? where you see the, is it behind the two windows, the further windows that it's we can beyond, see? It's beyond those. There's a little bit that sticks out that you can see. Oh. Right there. Yeah. yeah. And the fence is right up against it. You can't get around the yard at all where, where he's put the fence. It's right on top of the unit. So all I'm asking is that the fence be stopped at the point at which my property would be on. Um, available to me, which right. is where it where it originally stopped. Understood. So that's right. So let me ask the city attorneys here. The situation like this, this is you know we are governed by the design guidelines, <laughs> and so <clears throat> the issue with the neighboring property does not fall under the purview with this in this situation is. I think Ms. Brown makes an interesting case to say, you know, consideration of the, the neighboring property. I always understood that to be having the finished side of the fence facing the neighbors. But that's an interesting interpretation of the design guidelines here. And I'd just like to know what the city attorneys think. Yes, I think what you, what you just said is accurate, that the HPC's jurisdiction relates to application of the design guidelines to the project as presented. Um, yes. And so then it would just be a, um, just a determination by, by the commission as to whether anything pre presented was a, violated any of the written design guidelines. Right. It's just that note of um, 
it's just interesting thinking about the interpretation of consideration of the neighbors, um, unless this is a more of a civil matter between the two neighbors. Correct. All right. All right. Ms. Brown, thank you. Um, as you, as you well know, you know, we are, are governed by the design guidelines and in terms of design materials, that sort of stuff, the fence in question this evening meets those design guidelines. The issue with what's happening with your property, we can't, we can't deal with. It's just not part of what we can do. I, I really understand what you're saying though, and I think it's, I think it's an important one. But it becomes then a discussion between the applicant and the applicant's team and you as a neighbor on whether there's something that can be done. But we aren't able to do that. Well, but I, it okay. does actually say in the guidelines that the consideration should be given to, 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 na to, to neighbors. Yes, yes. And I do think that, I think that is a really interesting point. It gave me pause this evening. Thing is, the interpretation or the, the spirit of the design guidelines in that case is about the design of, and not um, design, well, let's see. Madam Chair. It, it certainly Wait. detracts from the character of me, of my, my property to have that, fe that fence extended that far forward. Madam Chair, the one the uh, look in the design guidelines. This is on Article Twelve, Subsection B. No, excuse me, Subsection D. Fences and walls. The um, second bullet point there is the one that potentially comes into play, and they have it up on the board as as, as well. Um, Complement that the fences and walls should complement the buildings and do not detract from their character in relation yeah. to their neighbors with the design, scale, placement, and materials of fences, walls, and gates. Uh, so, I, so I just say that to say I think it would be to the commission's determination as to whether the placement of, of the fence as proposed is is appropriate. Definitely detract. Miss Brown, is your air conditioner unit on the straight side of your chain leak? Fence, or is it on the rear side of the chain link fence? It's between. It's between the two houses, between one and two. But you said there was a chain link fence, correct? Is there a portion? There's an, oh, there's a chain link fence. There's a little narrow bit behind. It, and there's a chain link fence that cuts that off. Gotcha. Um, is it on the? Is it on the rear of the air conditioner or is it on the street side of the air conditioner? Rear. It's to the rear. So the air yes, yes. So yes, the air conditioner too. sits to the street side of that little chain link fence. I'm still even, I mean, even if somebody took down the chain link fence, I'm still not convinced that my air conditioner could be serviced. And I didn't put that air conditioner in. It was there when we moved Madam Chair, may I, if I have a, a question, uh, I'm trying trying to understand the issue so that I can advise the commission appropriately. Mm -hmm. The picture that's up that's up right now that is a that's a picture of an existing fence that is already on the property. That's the previous fence, isn't it? I think that's before there was any changes made. I think yes. that image shows it as it was originally. Before they took anything down or added it, that's the way I was taking it. The the, the I, I would I would just su suggest this maybe maybe clarify with the applicant or the applicant's representative. Uh, that picture is I mean it is showing an existing fence. I'm not don't mean it's existing there yes. right now today, mm -hmm. but that an existing fence there um, on the property. Um, uh, maybe clarify whether that fence is still there, if it's been taken down, when it was taken down, and make sure what the proposal is for what's what's going back there. In other words, will the is the is the proposed fence that they're talking about uh, going in essentially at the same place where that fence uh, was installed? We can clarify that, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Um, 
if you can have a seat for a moment, I'd like to just bring back the applicant's representative to just ask a few more questions. Thank you. Mr. Kavnis, do you mind? So can you just... Yeah, this, the, that, that Google image, street image there, that's, that's before anything was done. Uh, the cursor is right close to a property line stake we put, so that is the, the, the small stake with a pink flag on it. It's actually a property line, property boundary stake. Uh, so from about where the cursor is, where the fence begins to the north, that existing fence, uh, the rotten wood was taken down and new wood was, was, was replaced. From that point forward, there was an extension of the fence toward the front. Uh, so that's, yeah, so what's, it's, it's, got to be careful, we're saying existing, this was existing before anything was done, the more recent photo exi is existing today, so exactly right, yeah, two different points in time there. Uh, so that, that so other photo does show, the, the staff photo does show the, uh, uh, the fence as it exists today and the air conditioner pad relationship to that, if you want to take a look back at that one, if that helps any. Can we see that photo again? Some of it has it for me today, but from the street. The, f the photo. It doesn't appear we have any additional images. This is the best image that we have that shows that side of the house. Um, what was the one that had the fence on it? Yeah. Maybe it was but it, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the other side. Yeah, that's the other yeah, side of the house, side. right? <laughs> so you don't we don't have one on the west side, okay. Yes, the fence, the fence was brought forward on both sides. The same the same distance? Yeah, I think one's thirty, one's thirty five feet. Yeah. Thirty, thirty five. Generally the same, yes, sir. So do I understand correctly that on the other side of the house? You still have retained part of that existing fence. You've replaced some of the rotted boards, and then you've extended right. it as well. And, and then, and then with, with with new material, extended the fence. All right, forward. and it's extended as as far as this one is, on the right side of the house, <laughs> on the left yeah. side, approximately. Yeah, approximately. All right. The same distance. Yeah. Have you have you seen? Have you taken a look at what's happening on the? Neighbor's yeah, property, if there's the, any. I guess we could look back at the site plan, maybe, and there's. Um, that one? So I think we're trying to get another photo loaded, but so um, this is actually the concrete pad that the HVAC sits on. So it's 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 from the house to the property line. It may may encroach on Mr. Tesla slightly, but basically it's on the property. So the 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 uh, the, the, the neighbor's existing eight concrete pad for the AC unit uh, goes all the way from the building to the property line. Okay, here we go. Can you just... Uh, can we go back to that site plan for a second? All right, so show me, Mr. Cabinet, so if you I don't mind, can you show us what? It, how, how long, how far along... So I think maybe is the, the fence. chain link fence we've been talking about old existing chain link fence that was back in the shadows on the Google Earth image is is that, and then and of course this, um, the fence extends 
give me up a little bit. Well, the fence on this, yeah. So the yeah, the fence extends to, to there now. So the fence extends from here to here. So prior to any new construction, the line I just drew was just there. And the and this fence is the one that was existing that has been repaired. And then th this is the new. The extension of that fence. And then that photo that popped up there, what are we looking at here? We're, because we're seeing two different styles of fence. It must be in the, it's in the backyard looking west. Yeah, so. That photo is going to be looking at this area from going to be looking that way. So, am I seeing this correctly that we have two different styles of fence there? Shadow box style and then a rather solid slat? Because, it, yeah, it just is not filled in. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm clear on on this. What's ultimately so? Look like so, so the fence on the right hand side is going to be filled in to match the Correct. one on the left on the left hand side, hand side. Would which would so mean. This would be the, and and your other the other this, fence this on the. This is what it would eventually look like. I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Cabinets. I can't hear you. Can you speak into the mic? I'm sorry. I'm it's all right. Back your drawing. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, so the fence on uh, the fence outlined there in in the magenta color is what the rest of the fence would look like when it was finished. All right. So on, on both sides of the house. For my own clarification, what circled in magenta this was there before. That was there. Because, because now I'm confused. I'm confused now too. <laughs> because this photo is taken at the back of the existing house, not the addition. And so if that's that point, then you're not extending past that little corner of the sidewalk where it turns back and we're extending the tread additions. If you're standing basically looking at that corner, then we're only extending maybe, I don't know, four or five feet to the left of this photo based on the proposed site plan. I, that's... I mean, previously we talked about a 24 foot edition. Is that photo, are you standing in the backyard? That is in the backyard. Let me, let yeah. me, let me address So, no, it's going to be more than that. I'm sorry to interject. I'm Pat Roberts. I live at 3816 64th Street Northeast. Thank you. Um, what is happening with the fence is that all of the fence is going to be unified. There were two different segments of fence of two different ages. So, the dog ears that are close together are closer to the front of the property, they're going to be removed. And it's all going shadow box. As far as the profile or the extension of the fence, the guidelines state that the fence can go all the way to the front corner of the building. But we're not going to do that because that would just be kind of claustrophobic. As far as where the chain link fence is that is existing, that is in front of the AC unit closer to the street as seen from the street. So if that fence came down, it can't go back up if I'm not... If I'm not mistaken, in the historic district, you can't put up chain link as seen from the street, if I'm correct. Generally speaking, Guidelines that's correct. The shadow box and for the wood fence, for the height, and for the projection towards whoa, 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 the curb. Well, yeah, yeah, what, what, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just making sure that all those things are clear yeah, because no, it's it, all going to be the same fence. And, and Mr. Roberts, same don't move. Yeah, because you're clarifying some stuff. Stay up there. Um, because that helped to clarify a lot of the chatter that's going on here. And it's good to have this photo as well. So, Commission, this, if if this is something that you want to consider, this is a video that is coming from the public comment, the neighbor, um, if that's something you would like to consider sure. as well. Sure, it's part of public comment. Let's, let's view this. One of the, one of the issues with as things are sitting right now, as you see by the grade stake, the survey stake, is that the AC unit 
actually represents an encroachment on the property line. Mr. Tesney does not want to address that. He does not want to ask someone to move the equipment. We don't want to create any more of an issue than there already is, but he does want to unify the fence on his property so that it's all one continuous design fence, eliminate the dog ears versus the shadow box on the west side of the property, and he does want to profile forward in order to be able to close that part of the yard off a little bit, simply privacy. So right. it does meet all the design criteria. It is not profiling beyond the guideline stipulation as far as the projection goes, and it's not chain link. So I think all of the things about the fence, other than the fact that <laughs> someone started it without getting an approval, all of the guidelines, though, are met as far as fences go. And it would have been an expedited review, and it is surveyed, so there are stakes there, so we're not encroaching on her property. I do understand the concern about service, but I think that could probably be worked out with Mr. Tesney in the future if they had to get over there. Worst case scenario is you take down a fence panel and allow somebody to get access to the unit. But if they move the unit, they can't put it back and encroach on the property. So there's a lot of different things going on there that happen a lot in these little narrow lots, but all of the guidelines are met. We're not overstepping the boundaries of the guidelines at all. Are there any questions for Mr. Roberts? Now with this video, it, it we're just seeing the still image, it's fine, right? We're not, it's not, we don't need to see the actual video moving, okay. Um, and thank you so much, Mr. Roberts, because we're gonna see that shadow box style, like we saw on the other side of the house. It's all gonna be unified, got it. Whole crop. Thank you, thank you, that, that helped a lot. That was a lot of confusion there. All right. That was a, that was, um, a really interesting discussion. Thank, thank you, thank you, Ms. Brown, uh, for that. All right, so just trying to digest all of this, right? Because Kathy, are there hmm. any are there any to the guidelines? There's no hardship type elements to the guidelines, are there? I know we've talked about handicapped accessibility before to houses that we permitted temporarily while somebody was right, going through right. something, but are there any other type of hardship or inaccessibility aspects to the guidelines? Now, the, only, the only provision in the guidelines that I'm aware of that actually talks about, um, where it talks about hardship uh, is going to be in the variance procedures where someone could come and actually request a variance from the guidelines requirements because um, similar to a ZBA type variance where someone was making the, making the case to the, to the commission that the guideline, complying with the guidelines impo actually imposed a hardship on them. So there's no, there's no other mention of hardship or anything of, of that nature um, in the, uh, in the guidelines specific defenses. This is, this is just some interesting uh, points of discussion that came up tonight. It just you know. seems like to me that we're going to, that we could create a, a problem in the future between the two property owners if there were issue with the air conditioner. I mean. Well, I, I, I go back to. The civil aspect. Yes. I think about when we looked at 403 19th Avenue and that cinder block wall that came down because of the Buck House and that, remember the, the demolition and the rebuild there. Mm -hmm. And the existing structure formed part of the back wall of one of those condo units. And we didn't consider it. It was an important thing. It was important for the condos, but it wasn't part of us. And so, it was something that was negotiated between the applicant and the property owner, and it, it's, it, they resolved it. It's still in progress, but they resolved it. And I sort of think about this in a way, because um, I have to say, like, when Mr. Roberts came up and just stated basically what our design guidelines say, as much as I sort of see this situation going on with Ms. Brown, and, and I... I totally understand the the issue there I go back to I think about that fence and how or that that wall that we had to we talked about 
And I think it's a point of negotiation between the two property owners, but then there's no guarantee that Ms. Brown will have satisfaction, right? I mean, it's, so I don't know. It, it, it's a tough one, just looking at that. Um, it's a super tight, but there's a property line there. And the materials we look at are correct. And the length of the fence is all right. It's going to be, you know, properly done on both sides. And I keep coming back to, you know, what do we look at as a commission? We look at the design guidelines. We keep coming back to that. You know, the it's starting to get really complicated here in this case. So it's not so cut and dried. It's difficult. We're, we're you know, really working this out. But there is the issue of the neighbor who's had access to this um, air conditioning unit all these years. Now there's going to be a change. It's going to make it difficult. I don't know if it's impossible. I can't really tell. But is there something that can be negotiated between the applicant? Yes, is Mr. There, Roberts. Is there a way that when the fence is erected permanently or constructed that that section at the AC, HVAC, could, is there any way that the installation, if it differed there? Uh, that would be something that Mr. Tesney would have to ne negotiate with Ms. Brown, but I'm sure that he would be amenable. The interesting part of the existing condition is that the fence that is going up, as far as uh, in proximity to the AC unit, is there was already there. We're not changing the location of that fence. All we're doing is extending the fence towards the front yard. So the wood fence that is that was existing that you saw the picture of the mismatched fence, AC units on the other side of it. Ms. Brown seems to suggest that so, that's not the case. Ms. Brown? It isn't a question of changing that fence. That fence was not there. It was not in front of my air conditioner. It was not in front of my window, which I can now no longer get to to clean. Um, it stopped. It stopped to the point on the plan that it showed, which was where the little chain link fence comes across. It stopped there. And that is all I'm asking, that it stopped there again. That's all she wants, is for it to stop where the original fence stopped. And so I'm clear on that. Where did the original fence stop in relation to that AC unit? Was the AC unit totally exposed? It or did stopped. It have... There's, a, there's a chain link fence behind this fence. There's a chain link fence. I don't know whether it's theirs or mine, but, but it, it goes across as fences are supposed to do. It links to the building, to, to my house. And that is where... The board fence stopped. The at, original at, at board the... fence stopped. And that is where I would like it to stop again. So that I can clean the window, so I can clear out the bit of yard there, so that I can service my air conditioner. Thank you. Thank you. Does that clear it up at all? Well, it does, it doesn't. I'm still not fully clear on where the existing fence ends. Um, I'm looking at our <laughs> site plan. I'm listening to you. I'm hearing some other things here. Um, I, this is purely my opinion. Um, were this considered in a vacuum outside of all of these access and neighbor-related items, um, I, you know, we would probably say that that this is not any further toward the front of a of a of a property than than we would have accepted dozens and dozens of times other places. Right. So, um, in my mind, it then comes down to the matter of what is what are the, what is the spirit of the guidelines is as far as placement is concerned and things. So I would consider that in context of elsewhere in the neighborhood and, and in the historic districts as a whole. Um, as far as this matter related to the air conditioner and the access and all of that, um, it, it appears to me that for the life of that air conditioner having been there when it was added, when the house was air conditioned long after it was constructed, it was 
placed there with the kind of understanding that all of the access to that side of the house is through Mr. Tesney's property. So the fact that that access behind that air conditioner in front of that fence has occurred across the property line for perpetuity is, in my opinion, not the purview of this commission. That is a civil matter, and if Mr. Tesney doesn't want Miss Brown on his property in order to access that side of the house, that's a civil matter and not a matter for this commission to consider. So that's my interpretation of the guidance. Yeah, I would I would say that's very much in sort of the the spirit of what I was looking at as well. Um, you know, it, it's lovely to have a nice, you know, sort of something we're going to tie up. Hurt, but well, it is, it, it's like. just always nice to be able to satisfy everybody, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that here with what we do. That it is going to be down to um, the property owners ultimately on this because. We really are restricted with the design guidelines and consideration, and you know all of these sorts of things are in relation to design. You know the use issue, right? As we talk about, I'm thinking about the air conditioner as being a use issue rather than a design issue, and it's an access issue, which is use, and that's outside of us. And I, as much as I would love to see a beautiful compromise happen right here, right now. We can't push that because that's not us. We like. Does that make any sense? It does. It, can, it we, does. can we look at that photo? There's not a photo though that actually shows the extension there now. It shows the. It doesn't show the. Didn't post. that one photo show where the existing fence stopped? The video from the uh, neighbor the was no, probably the, the best. This one right here. I, I think is this the existing fence stopping the chain link fence? Yes, that's right. Can we see the video photograph again? <clears throat> those are new posts, so it appears that those are new posts, but old siding. Is that correct in what I'm seeing? To the, the posts themselves and the supports lead you to think that that aspect of the fence was not there. But that looks like old chiding. Yeah, the, the slats were reused. I yes, think. that's, yep. but it's new posts. Yep. So, it, But Ms. Brown's saying that the, that the fence didn't come that far to begin. With. Right, right. right. And we saw that picture, that Shows Google that Street View not. or whatever, showed that it didn't. It did not. So here, what we've got is a fence that's been put up without... Um, you know, sort of permission. Yeah. Um, that is a solid slat where we've got at the other end of it, toward the back of the house, we've got the shadow box style, right? Mr. Roberts, is that correct? Okay, thank you. And that was also a sort of no no combining those two different styles of fences. So this is being going to be changed to that shadow box style anyway. But yes, Dr. Nelson, that is right. So that fence wasn't there. It stopped at the chain link, approximately. Is that right, Mr. Roberts? Okay, got it. But I, I want, I, I would love to, as I said, have a, a lovely resolution here for everybody. The thing is, if we start, we've, we as a commission, like, understand these constraints and the problems and everything else, but the thing is, we have to be careful as a commission that we stay focused on what we have authority to base our um, approvals or non-approvals on. And it has to come down to the design guidelines and the spirit of those, what, what those design guidelines mean. Can, can the city representatives go back to the, the design guideline, the specific bullet point? So this uh, bullet point two, uh, the this, this specific language, it says the character in relation to the neighbors with the design scale placement materials. To, this is just an interpretation, but to me, this has everything to do with the stylistic application of the design and nothing to do with accessibility. 
And that, I think, is what frames um, our capability to weigh in on this situation. I agree with that. Um, because we're, we're, when we talk about, we're talking about the, you know, with the relation to the neighbors, it is based on design. The compliment, the not detracting, it's about design issues. And we have to be really careful if we start going down a path talking about use because that's not us. We can't, we really, we can't do that. And so it's sounding to me, <coughs> and I'd like to hear what my colleagues think about this, it's sounding to me that what we have before us is a, a fence proposal, <laughs> for a fence that partially went up already, that's gonna be fixed, but that meets the design guidelines for you know the placement, the materials, all of these sorts of things, right? Making sure it's it's clean on both sides, especially on the on the neighbor side of the fence. The length of the fence is fine. It's all all the proposal is fine. The issue comes up where we're having a fence where there wasn't one before, and it's having an impact on the neighbor. But we can't. There's nothing in the design guidelines that give us that power. to deny an application like this for that reason. Does that make sense, guys? Was this only brought, was this only brought before us because it was started without, without expedited review? If this had been taken through expedited review, would this have had met of all the characteristics and parameters to have been approved without coming to us? Yes. So in other words, if it had been started the correct way, it never would have come here to begin with. That's correct. The only re but it, once it's started without a permit, then regardless whether or not it meets everything, it has to come to the commission. That's correct. All right. So it's before us. I would I, I would like to just suggest to the neighbors to have some sort of dialogue about this fence. But what we have to do is really interesting discussion. And <clears throat> I think there's a lot of sympathy for the neighbor uh, with the issues of access. The commission can't address that. We have a fence that is um, appropriate in design, in height, in length, and in placement according to the design guidelines. That's what we have. I agree with that statement. So it's a matter of if, if they're willing to continue to further discussion with Ms. Brown, is that correct? Well, I don't even think it, that weighs in on our Yeah, it's, it's our just, it, it, I, would I would like to just say it would be great if you can work out something but we can't but mandate we can't anything. We, can, yeah. we, can't we can't suggest do. anything. It's just there's been an interesting. All right. Well, and and we will leave. Yeah, we'll we'll leave that for outside of this this hearing. If you guys don't mind. Um, one thing I will say is that the floor is still open for public comment. I have not closed it to public comment yet. All right, with all of this great discussion we've had. So let me, let me just do this. Is there anyone else here to speak in support of or opposition to bringing something new to the table? All right, then let me close the floor to public comment. And then we can move on uh, with discussion about this and a motion. But this is a tricky one. And Ms. Brown, we, we are very sympathetic to your situation. I just want you to, I want you to understand that and why it's generating so much discussion here. But you know, we, we, bring it, we bring it back down to the design guidelines, right? And I say at the, the hearing, we don't, we don't talk about use occup occupancy issues. And this is becoming, a, this is a, a use issue, not a design issue. Everything that's been discussed tonight has to do with, with use, access, all of those types of things that, that are routinely brought before 
other commissions and are, are handled in other ways. And I, I feel that, that we cannot have the precedent for considering those things in, in our matters. So um, therefore, in light of all of the things that have been stated about the appearance and the construction of the fence itself and the materials, I don't see any other way than to approve as presented. I, I agree with that, Mr. Morris. I, I do. As difficult as it is, we cannot step outside of what our, you know, what we are charged with. We cannot do that, and um, it's not even it's not even setting a precedent because this is the kind of thing we just cannot do. So, in that case, we have a motion to approve the application as presented this evening. And as I say this, I do like to just state to the team of the, the applicant's team there that we do have a sort of neighborly issue happening here that you're now very keenly aware of, and I'm just going to leave it at that. But we do have a motion to approve the proposal as presented this evening. I, I will second the motion. All right, so there's a motion to approve, and we've had a second. Any further discussion, folks, and then we'll vote. I guess I just... The scale and placement, and as it relates, is that how is that interpreted in this design issue? Is it is it strictly that it meets the letter of the law? That is, yeah, that it is. You know, on the on the property, it's six feet in height. Um, anything beyond six feet is a different conversation. Um, the style of fence, the materials of the fence, are things we look at. Those are all okay. I mean, unfortunately, we get in sub subjective discussions and character and relations to the neighbor and placement. So it's it's just something that I don't know how it's handled typically in in these. Right. Places. Well, typically, I don't, I'll just uh, for Mr. McCool's sake just say typically when we think about consideration for the neighbors, it has to do with having the finished side on the neighbor's side. All right, so they're not seeing the unfinished side of the fence. Um, we don't deal with the use issue with these sorts of things. So it's the appearance of it. And as long as it's not encroaching on the neighbor's property line or, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some other examples. I don't think we've had anything else. But that's the sort of thing that we look at. Yeah. Well, it's, it's unfortunate. It's a tight property line. There's a lot of stuff there on both sides. I know, I, I know. can see the owner wanting to improve and and block and have a, a better view on both sides so it's it's right and the thing is too one thing to always remember as we look at these is that if we deny an application we have to state why and we have to bring it all the way back to the design guidelines so what is our objection to that based on the design guidelines yep. and that's what you need to ask yourself so and they're 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 not they're not always clean cut this is a tr yep. this is a tough one it's a really tough one and you know, we have to always re be reminded that we look at the applicable design guidelines on what we have before us. So I had, have had a motion. I've had a second. Any further discussion? All right, so the motion is to approve the application as presented this evening. We've had the second. We will now vote. Dr. Nelson? Or shall I start at the other end? Other end. Starting at the other end, Mr. McCool. I'm going to have to vote no. Uh, I vote yes on this one. I'm voting yes. Yes. I'm going to vote no, and I'm going to use the second one, compliment the building's placement material. Those are the two things that step out to me is the compliment, compliment, complimenting the buildings. That could be the building on either side, not just one side, mm -hmm. the way I look at it, and placement. It's my two reasons. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, does Mr. McCool need to state his objection? If you don't yeah. mind, Mr. McCool. I just, it gets back to the scale and the placement. What specifically about the scale? I think it does block some some windows and 
and, and, and has, some, has some impacts on the neighbors. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Unfortunately, gentlemen, the application has been uh, not approved this evening for the fence. And so you can come back next month with a modified proposal. What, uh, and Madam Chairman, what I would suggest, because the, the, there's another part of this fence also that I think is gonna, is gonna be not changed right. uh, on the other side of the property. Um, it sounds like there's some complexity there, and I think having having the applicant come back next week with a uh, with a revised or next month, excuse me, with a revised proposal would be the appropriate course from here. Yes. So, gentlemen, you can come back next month with a revised proposal on the fence, and we can consider it then. We and we. Mr. Roberts, just as uh, just before you speak, I'll, I'll just say that we can't really, you know, like help design the fence right now or talk about modifications. We really have to lob the ball into your court and let you deal with that. But if sure. you want to state something, please do. Simply a question: the guidelines for placement on the property line, for the height of the fence, and for the design of fences in the historic commission. Mm -hmm. In your purview are listed. Correct. I think based, I think legally, all those criteria are met. So this is pretty, pretty out of the ordinary. Never seen this before. It meets all of the guidelines. So I would have to say, I would question the judgment of both of you that said no, because we met all of the guidelines legally. And, and Mr. Roberts, thank yes. you for your comments. And I will just say that you are welcome to speak to city staff about this tomorrow and understand and, and get some further guidance and clarification. Does that help you? All right. Um, all right. So we will move on to our next application, please. Commission, this next case, uh, we're not sure if the petitioner is here in, in person, so we're going to give an opportunity to see if they were here. If not, we're going to let you decide if you would like to continue this case, push it to the end. Sorry, this is, hang on a second. I'm just <laughs> gathering all my stuff here. Um, well, it's up to commission members. What would you like to do with this? Motion to continue. All right, let's. We have motion to continue. Do I have a second? Second. All right. We have motion to continue. We have a second. We're going to begin with Dr. Nelson this time. To continue. Yes. 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 Thank you. Moving on, HPC 1523, Mark Poisson petitions for a certificate of appropriateness for material change to windows. This is on the primary structure at 41 University Circle in the University Circle Historic District. Council District 4. So here we have the location of the property as well as uh, the aerial view. This is the primary structure. And here we have the adjacent northern, eastern, and western properties. So the proposal is to replace all current wood windows with double hung aluminum clad wood windows. So again, here we have the primary structure. Just a closer up image of those windows getting into the materials. This is for all windows on the primary structure. Uh, they will be replaced with aluminum clad wood. And here we have those material spec sheets. This is the applicable design guidelines for windows. We did not receive any public comment for this application. We do have the petitioner here to speak in person. And um, do I assume they're doing the sashes? For the entire window? I believe it's the whole window, and the okay. petitioner can confirm okay. that. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Bowen? Thank you so much. Let me invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to come on up. 
And uh, we'll, we'll need your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Mark Posseline, uh, 16390 Beans Road, Northport. So with this application, you are replacing the entire window. No. You're doing the sashes. Sashes on. Okay. Thank you. That, that's a big question. Thank you so much. Can we go back to the, uh, ex the front facade for a sec? There we go. Does this include the circular window on the front of the house? No. Does not include the circular window. The double hung window. Okay. Do we have any questions? All right. No questions. Thank you so much. Is there anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to the application? I'll close the floor to public comment and open the floor to uh, discussion and a motion by commission members. Fairly straightforward application this evening. Placing the sashes. Materials are are approved, matching the light patterns. We've approved these numerous times mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. um, motion to approve is presented. Do I have a second? I uh, second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, the motion is to approve as presented this evening. Beginning on my right, please. Yes. 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 Mr. Potsdam, your application has been approved. Um, good luck with your project. Should anything change, Please see city staff uh, before you move forward. Good luck. Next application is HPC 1623, Montpacine petitions for a certificate of appropriateness for the addition uh, to the rear of the primary structure. This is at 42 University Circle, University Circle Historic District. This is also Council District 4. So here's the location of the property as well as an aerial. This is a view of the primary structure from the street. Next, we have the adjacent northern western properties. So this proposal may seem familiar. This actually came before you back in October 2022. Uh, the proposal is essentially the same. They are just reconfiguring where they're putting doors and windows. So they're enclosing a small area of the deck, uh, re relocating doors and windows on the structure. Um, and adding siding that will match the existing siding. So again, here's that primary structure. This is a view of the rear of the primary structure showing where that uh, renovation will take place. So this is, we have the existing on top and the proposed changes that received approval back in October of 2022. Uh, so from that, this is the new petition. So you can see they're relocating uh, some of the windows and doors, they're removing um, a door and a window. Here is a good, what was proposed and received approval back in October versus the additional changes. All the materials are to remain the same. Um, it's just a reconfiguration of those two things. So the materials, aluminum clad wood windows, matching asphalt shingles, and the matching siding. And here's a spec sheet for those windows and for the door. Next are our applicable design guidelines for rehabilitation and alteration, as well as the windows, roofs. We did not receive any public comment for this application, and the petitioner is here to speak in person. Thanks very much. Any questions for Mr. Bowen? Will you leave the, the comparison of the previous approval and the current proposal? Up? Sure. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> May I invite the applicant's representative to... Uh, step up to the podium and state your name and address, please. Uh, Mark Posseline, 16390 Beans Road, Northport. Thank you. So can you walk us through the changes? Ma'am? Can you walk us through the changes? Uh, from... It's, was, it's fairly October, clear, but... What was approved mm -hmm. in October was right. since then. Yes, yes, the changes since then. There were a set of doors that we were going to reuse and put new fixed windows on each side and then they changed it to all new windows and doors in that one quad unit. And closing in an existing back door and relocating it. I think that's all that's different. 
Are there any further questions? Oh, thank you again. And if we have anything, if anything comes up, we'll bring you back to the podium. Right, thank thank you. you so much. Is there anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to the application? All right, let me close the door, cl close the floor to, <laughs> close the door to public comment. And let's uh, begin a discussion by commission members. I probably stated previously that this house is, and especially the rear of it with all of these additions, is something of a, of a mixture of, of styles and materials and everything. And um, in my opinion, it's uh, a step probably in the right direction of consistency. So uh, I see no issue with this. Well, and I, I think that if we had seen the proposal tonight back in October, we would have approved that too. It's just it's just a different flavor of something that we've already approved, Agreed. essentially. So I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, so the motion is to approve the application as presented this evening. Uh, beginning on my right, please, Mr. McCool. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Mr. Passin. Your application has been approved. Should anything change, please see city staff before you move forward, and good luck with this project. Next case is HPC 1723. Mark Passin petitions for a certificate of appropriateness for material change to the windows on the primary structure at 21 University Circle, also in the University Circle Historic District, Council District 4. So here we have the aerial view of the property as well as the location. This is a view of the primary structure, adjacent eastern property and western property as well as the southern property. Uh, so the proposal is to replace all current wood windows with double hung aluminum clad wood windows. I believe it is just the sashes. Uh, here again we have uh, the primary structure, the materials, aluminum clad wood windows, and here are those spec sheets. Right. And then this is the applicable design guidelines. Again, we received no public comment for this application, and the petitioner is here to speak in person. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Bowen? Thank you. And we will need the name and address one more time. Uh, Mark Passane, 16390 Bean Grove, Northport, Alabama. Thank you very much. Anything in addition you want us to know about this application? Just the same thing we just talked about on right. number 27. Right, we're doing same, the sashes. Just, just right. the sashes. Okay. Not the units themselves. Any other questions? Thank you. Let me open the floor to public comment. Anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to the application? I will close the floor to public comment and open the floor to discussion or motion by commission members. Very straightforward application here. Sashes in materials we've approved. Um, maintaining the openings, the light patterns, proportions, all of that. I think it meets uh, the design guidelines. I think we just um, approved uh, something in the same neighborhood, uh, similar style. Um, I motion to approve as submitted. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All right, so the motion is to approve as presented. Voting beginning on my left, Mr. Uh, Dr. Nelson, please. Yes. 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 Right, Mr. Passin. Your application has been approved. Uh, good luck with the project. Should anything change, please see city staff. There will be a final inspection at the end. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Moving on to HPC 1823, Margaret Peacock petitions for a certificate of appropriateness for an addition to the rear of the primary structure. This is at 1905 8th Street in the Druid City Historic District, Council District 4. So here we have the location of the property as well as an aerial view. This is a view of the primary structure from 8th Street. Here we have the adjacent northern and eastern property as well as the western property. 
So here again is the primary structure. This is a view of the primary structure from Queen City Avenue. Next, we have a few of those pictures that show the deck is to be replaced. Uh, the deck, the petitioner has stated, is currently sinking. Um, so here again, we have a closer up image of that, as well as an image of where some of the addition will take place. This is the current survey of the house. And then here we get into the existing and the proposed floor plan. Uh, so you can see they are proposing to remove the deck and, and go back with an addition. Includes a sunroom, expansion of the kitchen, as well as a mudroom. This kind of shows it a little bit more in detail. Uh, this petitioner did receive ZBA approval from the ground coverage ratio requirement. They also are not encroaching on any setback requirements. Um, so they are here just for the proposal of that addition. Here we have the existing elevations, as well as the proposed elevations. The materials are to match those that are currently existing on the primary structure. So here we have an outline. The siding will match the siding of the primary structure, as well as the windows, the foundation, uh, the roof material. It is essentially to match what's currently there. And here we have the spec sheet for those windows. Next are our applicable design guidelines related to alterations, as well as the windows and roofs. We did receive one public comment in support of this application. We have the petitioner and the representative to speak in person. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bowen? Thank you very much. Let me invite the applicant uh, to come up to the podium, please, and we'll ne need your name and your address, please. I'm Margaret Peacock, address 1905 8th Street, Tuscaloosa, 19, uh, 35401. Thank you. So, Dr. Peacock, can you tell us more about your application? Um, we're, it's nice to see what's happening on the interior, but our concern is on the exterior. Sure. It sounds like you're matching materials, you're matching styles. Yes. Um, anything else you'd like to tell us? Um, I, I have my contractor here to answer detailed questions. Um, the, the house is in dire need of, of repair. The kitchen is sinking. The deck is unsafe. Um, instead of, uh, instead of um, fixing just fixing the exterior to replace it, um, we decided to do a value add, um, actually to bring it back to uh, its original um, character. You can sort of see at some point that pantry in the original in the, in the existing first floor plan, at some point someone built a pantry uh, that actually blocks the window looking out from the dining room. Um, really, really poor architectural decisions made at some point in before you guys existed and or before you guys had any leverage. Uh, so um, hired an architect to try and, um, and fix some pretty serious architectural flaws in the house. I'm glad you pointed that out. That's a really interesting detail about the pantry. Um, I appreciate seeing seeing that now. I didn't notice it before, but it's very clear now. Do we have some questions for Dr. Peacock? Or for her contractor? Please feel it, free to ask him questions. Yeah, it, I made him come and sit well, here for the last two yeah, minutes. I, I will say, <laughs> I, it, it appears uh, that we have no questions okay. at this time, so right. I'll invite you to have a seat. All right, thank you. Yes. And we'll need your name and your address as well, uh, if you don't mind. I'm Keith Walters. I own WC Homes and Renovations, 5208 Oak Way, Northport, Alabama. I did have one question because originally we were going to go back with a beveled cedar, smooth cedar lap side because of you can't get what's on there anymore. But it would match. Right. It would match what's there. But I'm told that we may be able to go back with a hardy board lap siding. And I didn't I wasn't sure about that. I had a question on that. Because if we can do the hardy board, it's gonna be a more durable, longer lasting, won't have the issues with the rot. We've uh, we've approved hardy board um, paneling, siding in the past. Okay. Um, it's just if we can look at the let's look at the elevations and just to make sure that you're not going to be 
I don't know, dovetailing them oh, on the no, same no, same no. side? We've, we've got 90 degree angles wherever we would use that um, because of the bump out of the dining room mm -hmm. window where we're opening that back up. Well, actually, we would be able to come back into a corner and we would keep the exact same lap distance as well as everything else. On this structure, there's also a addition that was done at some point in time on the left hand side, well, on the right hand side looking from the front, that has raw block, painted raw block. The rest of the structure has stuccoed block foundation. Mm -hmm. We would also be matching that in. How about the, so the stucco? The, the stucco, stucco yes. that's smeared to match what you see on the front in the front picture, you see it's a it's a painted smear. Even though you can't see that addition, we are going to keep it. We're going to take it around because it's back on the right side, and we're going to smear that also. Oh, good. That's keep good. It homogenous in in the look. Yeah. You know the the concern of the the commission, of course, is about the the integrity of the house, the design of the house, and to make sure that the siding matches. Yeah. In profile, right, um, of what you have there. Yeah. So that's the main thing. We have approved party siding in the past for additions and things. So um, we would need to state to hear specifically that you want to do this. You want to go with the hardy? As long as we can get it approved, I'm. Uh, I would prefer the hardy, but I I use cedar because of its natural rot resistance, insect right. resistance, right. and it is a natural wood product. Is why I, 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 I used it on a house around the corner on Queen City on an addition I did. Okay. Okay. Uh, several years ago. We have in the past uh, approved either this or that um, with applications when both materials are fine. Commission members are fine with that. So we could, in fact, do that this evening, right? Okay. So uh, just to let you know, we can, depending on the discussion, we could can approve either of those materials. So you guys can then just figure out what you want to do. Okay. Um, what works best. All right, thank you. Any further questions? Thank you so much. So we've had one submitted uh, comment in support of the application. Is there, is there anyone here to speak in support of or, or opposition to the application? Seeing none, I'll close the floor to public comment and open the floor to comments, discussion, motions by the commission. In relation to the Hardy um, request, I don't have any issue with that as long as it matches the same coverage and, and um, lap size uh, as what is existing. Um, everything that's proposed is on the rear of the house and it's just standard lap siding, so none of these uh, ornate details that are on the front are getting replaced or anything like that that would would create any sort of concern on my part related to that portion. Everything else seems very well integrated from an architectural uh, standpoint. I, w I would agree with that. So was that a motion maybe? Yes. So moved for, uh, with the caveat that um, either hardy or cedar mm -hmm. are acceptable siding materials. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second it. Thank you. Any discussion? It's a thoughtful, it's a thoughtful um, renovation, and matching the materials. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, just trying trying to keep the integrity of the home. Much appreciated. So, any further discussion, folks? The motion is to approve the application as presented, with the addition that we would also approve hardy siding, um, appropriate hardy siding that matches the profile of the existing on this application. I've got the motion, I've got a second. Let's vote. Dr. Nelson. Yes. 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 Dr. Peacock, good luck with your project. It's a wonderful home. Should anything change though, from what we saw tonight, please see city staff before you move forward with it. Um, there will be a final inspection based on what we approved this evening. Good luck with your project.
Commission, due to Mr. Edwards having to recuse himself from this petition, HPC 1923, uh, this petition will not be heard and it'll be heard at next month's meeting. Thank you. Do we need a motion to continue? No, since we don't have quorum, the, the vote can't take place, so it'll, it'll just be pushed. Moving on to the last case of the night, we have HPC 2023, Steve Morgan and Vance Ballard petitioned for a certificate of appropriateness for the construction of a pool in the side yard of the property at 1201 Queen City Avenue. This is in the Druid City Historic District and Council District 4. So here we have the location of the property as well as an aerial view. Here we have a view of that primary structure. This is the adjacent northern and eastern properties. So the proposal is for a 10 by 14 foot in-ground pool with also a five by eight foot spa. Uh, the pool will be surrounded by stone veneer and the pool will also be enclosed by over a six foot wall. So again, here's a view of the primary structure. This is a view from Queen City Avenue. We have a view of that surrounding wall. And this is the patio area where the pool will be located. So here we have that up close site plan and you can see the pool is located at least six feet away from the property line, which is one of our zoning requirements. Uh, the pool is essentially located in that courtyard area. And here's that pool shown in that patio area. This is a diagram that shows what the pool would look like. We also have the materials. So again, it'll be surrounded by stone veneer. Uh, the decking will be uh, the concrete decking that's already existing on that patio. And here we have the applicable design guidelines for our pools and hot tubs. We did not receive any public comment for this application. And we do have the petitioner here to speak in person. Thank you. Any questions for city staff? Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Let me invite the applicant to come on up to the podium and state your name and address, please. Thank you, Steve Morgan, 1201 Queen City Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. What else can you tell us? Anything else you'd like us to know? Uh, I think everything's covered. Um, we wanted to intentionally make it uh, smaller and, and, and relative size to the existing courtyard where it wasn't overwhelming. So um, our focus is to keep the historic nature of the house the way it is. The courtyard's currently, um, you can't see anything in the courtyard from any of the side streets. So because of the existing wall, we just wanted to leave it and, and put a, uh, I think they call it a plunge pool now, just a small pool that's also, it'll be heated with the, with the adjacent hot tub with it. So that was our, that was our thinking. Are there any questions for Mr. Morgan? Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll open the floor to public comment. Is there anyone here to speak in support of or opposition to the application? I will close the floor to public comment and open the floor to discussion by commission members. Um, we've got a courtyard, existing courtyard. They're adding a pool there. Materials are fine. Scale seems fine to me. It's already not visible from the street. Usually anything related to pool approvals goes back to the enclosure. All of that is existing. Yep. I, I see nothing to take any issue with. Motion to approve is presented. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I will second. Thank you. Um, any discussion or any... Uh, Comments before we vote. All right, thank you, folks. The motion is to approve the application as presented this evening. We will vote. Uh, let's begin with Dr. Nelson, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. So, Mr. Morgan, your application has been approved this evening. Good luck with the project. Do know if anything changes, see city staff, and there will be a final inspection. Appreciate your patience this evening. Thank you so much. Moving on, it is now time to elect a chair and vice chair. So you can make a motion or suggest names. I nominate Kathy Pagani as chair. Well, thank you. 
I accept that nomination. I would like to nominate Jordan Morris as vice chair. Okay. <laughs> I'll accept it. Thank you. <laughs> so are we, do we vote on the slate of the two of us together, or do we, do, what, do we ask for other nominations? Secret ballot. Secret ballot. Yes, <laughs> I, I think what would be in order is to ask, ask if there are any other nominations. Are there any other nominations? Which would one do? And if there are no other nominations, then uh, the next thing in order would be to close the floor uh, for nominations and proceed to a vote. All right, I will close the floor to further nominations, and we will vote. Uh, first vote would, would be for the chair of the commission. I'm happy to serve if you would want me to serve. And we'll vote beginning with Mr. McCool. Yes. Yes. Do we need five affirmative votes? Uh, the rules of the commission only require five affirmative votes to approve a certificate of appropriateness or um, to um, or, or to, to act on a certificate of appropriateness. This is a procedural vote, so it would just be subject to a majority of the quorum. Majority of those present. Yes, yes, ma'am, majority okay. of the quorum. So then I'll abstain. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for your support, uh, commission members. All right, and on the motion uh, for Jordan Morris to serve as vice chair, we will vote. Uh, let's begin with. Yes. Hmm. I'll okay. abstain. I will vote yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that motion also passes. So you've got us for another chunk of time, folks. Here we are. Thank you, everyone, for all the work. Any expedited reviews? Six expedited reviews since the previous HPC meeting. Most of these were either interior alterations or landscaping items. Well, thank you, for, thank you, staff, for all the work you did putting this hearing together. Thank you, commission members. Uh, job well done. Uh, appreciate, appreciate it. Have a good evening. This hearing is closed. <laughs>